Breaking news from outer space Truth and fiction, same embrace Lance and Gina lead the way Decoding myths from day to day Okay, let's uh, try and get our heads around this. It's honestly pretty staggering news. It really is. A massive cube, 3,000 kilometers across. This is just vast, roughly Western Australia. Yeah, here. something like that. And it's heading towards us at, what, 0.06 C? 6% of light speed. That's incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. About 18,000 kilometers per second. With impact projected in just over four years, Skynet News broke it, called it Cubus Primus. Right. But, you know, we needed to dig a bit deeper, and you found this uh, this dissertation, Dr. Cosmotecton's work. Exactly. Multivectoral Abwehr System. <laughs> it's quite a title. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, a bit of a mouthful. But the core idea is fascinating, especially now. It's about combining asteroid and alien defense systems under something called Project EGRs. And Project EGRs popped up in the Skynet report too, didn't it? They mentioned rote phase omega. They did, which strongly suggests, you know, highest alert, they're actively looking at the concepts in this dissertation, likely seeing how they might apply. It's like this academic paper suddenly became the most relevant document on the planet. Incredible timing, or maybe incredibly worrying timing. So that's our mission for this deep dive, right? to look at Tecton's research, which was purely hypothetical when written. Totally theoretical, focused on asteroid deflection, mostly. And see if any of those ideas could possibly work against this. Gua's Primus. Where should we start? Chapter 1. Kinetic Impactors. Sounds good. Kinetic Impactors. The basic principle, as Tecton puts it, is pretty straightforward. Hit the incoming object with enough mass and velocity to change its path. Cosmic billiards, essentially. Pretty much. Tecton even uses this tagline, Momentum is masse mal hoffnung. Momentum equals mass times hope. It's the go-to concept for asteroid defense. Right. We've seen simulations like DART, but on a much smaller scale. The problem here is the scale, isn't it? Yeah. A 3,000-kilometer cube? It changes everything. Can we actually build an impactor big enough, fast enough? I mean, the mass of this cube must be astronomical. What if it's incredibly dense or strong? Could our impactor just, I don't know, crumple? That's a huge unknown. The energy transfer needed is, well, off the charts compared to typical asteroid scenarios Tecton would have modeled. We're talking orders of magnitude difference, the sheer inertia. So simply ramming it might be a non-starter? <laughs> okay, what's next in the dissertation? Chapter 2. Nuclear deflection. Tecton calls it das letzte Mittel der Wahl, the last resort. It doesn't sound too optimistic. No. And the tagline is pretty intense, too. Wenn die Sonne nicht reicht, zünden wir eben selbst eine. If the sun isn't enough, we'll just light our own. Wow. So using nuclear explosions to push it. Exactly. Not necessarily to destroy it, but the blast force could potentially nudge it off course. But again, the scale and the unknowns. Yeah, what if it just breaks apart? Instead of one giant problem, we get hundreds of slightly smaller but still planet-killing problems heading our way. That's the nightmare scenario. We have no idea about its internal structure. Plus, the ethical and, well, interstellar political implications. Of nuking an unknown alien object. Yeah, that feels like a bad first impression. Skynet News didn't mention any direct attacks, just defensive prep. Maybe they're worried about that fragmentation risk, too. Almost certainly. And Tecton's whole angle includes the possibility of an intelligent adversary. A nuke might be seen as, you know, a declaration of war. Okay, definitely unsettling. Moving on. Chapter 3 sounds a bit gentler. Gravity tractors. Gravitation structure, mm -hmm. yes. Tecton's tagline here is, Die Gravitation ist das sanfteste aller Werkzeuge und eines der klugsten. Gravity. Mm -hmm the gentlest and one of the cleverest tools. How does that work? You park a very massive spacecraft near the object. Its own gravity, though tiny, exerts a constant pull, slowly, very slowly, altering the object's trajectory over a long time. And the Steinet report mentioned new gravity tractor platforms being moved to Mars orbit, so they're looking at this. It seems so. It fits directly with the dissertation's concepts uh, adapted for this uh, situation. Four years. Is that nearly enough time for a gentle gravitational nudge to work on something so massive moving so fast? That's the crux of it. It's incredibly unlikely. Gravity tractors usually need decades, maybe centuries, for asteroid deflection. To affect Cubus Primus in four years, the tractor would need to be unbelievably massive itself and maintain perfect position. The math probably just doesn't work on this timescale. Right. Feels like we're running out of less destructive options fast. Chapter 4. Lasers. Photonen basierte Ablenksystem und Laserwaffen. 
Photon-based systems and laser weapons. Ich das Waffe endlich im wörtlichen Sinn. Light as a weapon, literally. And Skynet News said the Doppelsun laser station on the moon is undergoing sharp calibration. Sharp calibration. Yeah, that alignment is striking. The idea is using high-energy lasers, maybe to vaporize surface material ablation, creating thrust. Sort of like tiny rocket bursts? Kind of, or just the sheer pressure of the photons themselves pushing it. But the energy needed against a 3,000-kilometer object. It's almost unimaginable. We need power sources beyond anything we currently have, probably. So maybe it's not about pushing the whole thing. Could the lasers be for something else, like probing it, trying to destabilize it, or target specific points? That seems more plausible, actually. The sharp calibration might hint at precision targeting. Maybe they're trying to analyze its composition from afar, or target potential weak spots, if any exist. Less brute force, more. Surgical strike. Interesting. Okay, chapter five is albedo manipulation on solar dynamic, changing its reflectivity. Yeah, albedo manipulation. The tagline, Verdi sun at controlliert, controlliert die Flugbahn. Whoever controls the sun controls the trajectory. Sounds very subtle. Extremely subtle. Yeah. The idea is you make one side, say, whiter or blacker, changing how much push it gets from sunlight over a very long time. But again, four years. And the sheer surface area of this cube. Exactly. You need to somehow paint or modify millions of square kilometers in space very quickly. And even then, the effect would likely be minuscule compared to its momentum. It's a strategy for long-term asteroid management, not an imminent crisis like this. Tecton likely included it for completeness. Makes sense. So, probably not a primary plan. That leaves Chapter 6, Massenwerfer und Drückstoßantriebe. Mass drivers and retro rockets. Right. Den Gegner mit seinem eigenen Gewicht schlagen, beat the enemy with their own weight. Okay, what does that entail? Two main ideas, probably. One, launching huge amounts of mass from somewhere, like Earth or a moon, to create a counterforce, basically Newton's third law on a planetary scale. A mass driver. Exactly. And the Skynet report mentioned the Ganymede protocol being activated. There's speculation this could involve a massive facility on Ganymede designed for just this kind of mega threat. Using Ganymede's mass somehow. Potentially. Yeah. Launching material from it. The other idea in Tekon's chapter might be attaching engines, retro rockets, directly to the object to slow it down or steer it. Whoa. Attaching mm -hmm. rockets to an alien cube, that sounds yeah. optimistic and incredibly dangerous. Highly audacious, certainly. The logistics, the risks, and even the mass driver idea, the amount of mass you'd need to launch to affect Tubus Primus is just mind-boggling. We're talking about truly extreme last-ditch concepts here. Which brings us back to the elephant, or rather the giant cube in the room, the alien factor. Tecton's dissertation was specifically about adapting asteroid defenses for intelligent, tactically acting threats. That's the core premise that makes it so relevant now. It's not just a big rock. And that quote from Dr. Isonami in the Skynet piece really hits home. It moves with a purpose, and purpose is always unsettling when you don't know the sender. Precisely. Purpose changes everything. An asteroid follows predictable physics, an object under intelligent control. It could dodge, it could anticipate our moves, it could have defenses we can't even imagine. So a kinetic impactor might just miss if they maneuver. Or they could shoot it down. Nukes might be met with overwhelming retaliation. Gravity tractors rely on a predictable path they might not follow. Lasers could be useless against advanced shielding, trying to attach rockets. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And the silence is the worst part? Maybe. We know nothing about their intentions or capabilities. Are they hostile? Oblivious? Just passing through, but too close? That uncertainty undermines every strategy we've discussed. All these methods Tecton analyzed assume a certain predictability that might simply not exist here. The dissertation's focus on intelligent adversaries was prescient, wasn't it? Chillingly so. So wrapping this up, the takeaway seems to be, Dr. Tecton gave us a vital toolbox looking at asteroid defenses against smart threats. But Cubus Primus, because of its sheer scale and that unknown intelligence factor, it breaks the toolbox. Or at least demands tools far bigger and more sophisticated than we imagine needing. The existing ideas are starting points, maybe, but they need radical upscaling and adaptation for something that might actively resist. Which leaves us with a pretty heavy question for everyone listening, I think. We have four years, we have silence, we seem to be defaulting to these modified asteroid defense plans. Is that enough? Is our current thinking, our frame of reference based on rocks, actually equipped to deal with this? Or do we need something entirely new, a completely different paradigm? And what if? Mm -hmm. What if they aren't hostile at all? 
but the cube is still coming. Its arrival might be catastrophic just by its physical presence, regardless of intent. How do we handle that possibility? A lot to think about. A truly unprecedented situation. Breaking news from outer space. Truth and fiction, same embrace. Lance and Gina lead the way. Decoding myths from day to day. Sock Skynet News. Bold and bright. It's a cutting edge, but... Gaps with mystery. Aliens lurking, planets align. False truths wrapped in cosmic signs. Astrophysics, UFOs, we. Gaps with mystery AG from the cosmos to your screen Every theory 